Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Unity game development scripting tutorial. This tutorial is for the absolute basics of C Sharp scripting in the Unity software. So if you've never done any scripting before, this is a great place to start. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to go into the Unity Hub, okay? Make sure that it is updated and you've got 2.4.2 at least, depending on when you're watching this video. In the Learn tab, if you'd rather skip this video, it is actually a tutorial that is created by Unity themselves. In the Beginner Scripting section, it's the first video in there, and it is about five minutes long. The problem with that video is that it doesn't explain anything very well. It just kind of throws it at you and says, type in this code, this is what this does, and then you hit play and it works. So we're gonna go into a little bit more depth than that and hopefully you guys pick up a lot more information um, based on what I'm adding on my end, okay? So here we go. Go to the projects area, choose with the down arrow, the 2019.4.13 F1. Now you can choose any version you want, but this is the long-term support one that's available right now, which means that there's gonna be less bugs and it's gonna be supported longer than normal versions, okay? So I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna make sure I'm on a 3D game. I'm going to type in, you can just type in RGB, but I'm going to make mine RGB3 since this is the third one that I'm trying to make since my first video and my second video did not work, but we're going to go with it anyways. Okay. So hit create. While that's loading, let me explain what this game or this scenario is going to do. Within this scenario, what's going to happen is you're going to have a big platform with a small cube that floats above it. When I hit play, the game is going to have physics on the, on the small cube. So physics means mass and drag and, and gravity and things like that. So when I hit play, that cube is going to fall back down to the surface. Um, otherwise, if you don't put a rigid body on there and you don't put those physics on there, the cube would just float and stay exactly where it is. So that's the first part. The next part is, is once it hits the ground, as I hit different keys on the keyboard, it's going to change the color of that main cube. So here we go. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go in the assets area, the assets folder. You'll see scenes already, but you're going to create two new folders by doing a right click and going to create folder. Our first one is going to be called materials by clicking over here again, and then right click create folder. We're going to call one scripts. Within the scripts folder, right click, create C sharp script. And we're going to call this cube behavior. Try not to put any spaces in there because it will mess up the editor. So make this all one word. Uh, if it's going to be capitalized C, capitalized B, it has to be that way in the script as well. Go back to the materials folder, right click, create material and call this ground. With the ground material selected, you'll see that you can change the color of it. Let's make the ground a really light green. And then you can close this color out and we'll then drag that onto our big object. Let's create our objects. Right click, 3D object, cube. Single click on the name and we'll change that to ground. Then click in here again in the hierarchy, right click, create, 3D object, cube again. This second cube we're gonna leave called cube. And we're going to raise that one above the original ground. The cube one, you can keep exactly the size it is, one by one by one. It does not matter the position or the height or anything like that. Just make sure that it's floating above the ground surface that we're going to make. On the ground one, we're going to first of all change the size. Make it 10 in the X, make it 1 in the Y, and make it 10 in the Z. That's going to make it 10 by 10. I'm going to then take my material, click and hold, and drag that onto the ground. When I hit play, you'll see that the cube is just going to float in the air because there is no uh, gravity, no mass, no drag, nothing like that yet. So we're going to add that right now. So hit play again. You're going to go and click on cube. You're going to go to add component, and you're going to type R here. And what that's going to do is it's going to show you rigid body. Let's click on that you'll see it's mass drag, angular drag, uh, gravity, okay? So now when I hit play, since it has a rigid body of physics on it, just like in ReadyMaker when we were putting physics on different game objects, the game object itself will fall down until it hits something solid. Or if there was nothing there, it would just keep falling, okay? Hit play again. Let's go back to the scripts. Cube behavior. We're going to go ahead and click this cube behavior script, and we're going to drag that onto the cube. And now double click on that script and that's going to open up Visual Studio. 
So let's go ahead and explain the main components of the scripting within Unity software. Each script that you create is going to look like this script, which has the namespace, which is just an area that's saying, hey, we're going to use the Unity engine and all of the different things that you can do within Unity. We have the variables, and in this case, this is just the name of our script. Make sure that if you change the name of your script in the project, that you change it in the script as well. Otherwise, it will not link. We have uh, a comment here. So if you put two slashes, okay, you can type anything you want at any point in your script, and that's going to give you comments to yourself. So if I wanted to change this and say like, you know, in this start area, which I'm going to talk about in a second, um, setting the count to zero, which means that if I was going to pick up collectibles or something within a game like Rollerball, I would need to set the count to be zero before the game even starts. And that's what this means here. This void start means what are we going to actually do before the game starts in order to set up the game before you even hit play? Okay, so this comment could say like, hey, right here, I'm setting the count to be zero. And then I type something in here like count equals zero. Okay, but in this case, we don't actually need void start because we're not setting anything up that's going to start before the game actually plays. So you can get that out of there. The next one you'll see is called void update. Update is called once per frame. What that means is that anything that you put in these squiggly brackets here or these braces is going to be called every frame within the game. So if you're running 60 frames per second on a game, it's going to be called 60 times per second. Okay. So something within update could be like with Rollerball when you collect the different collectibles. As you collect them, you might want to say something in here that says every time I collect one, please add one to the count. Now we're at one, now we're at two, and so on. That's something that would be updated every single frame because you want it to pay attention during the game to what's actually happening. So in this case, we're actually going to put our code in here, or our scripting in here, uh, that's going to allow us to press down different keys on the keyboard in order for it to register and change the color of the material on our main object. So we're going to actually have three if statements, okay? If parenthesis input dot get key down, and I'm going to explain what this is in a second. Open parenthesis key code dot R, two parentheses. And then you're going to hit enter and you're going to open up a brace and you're going to hit enter twice. That's going to give you an area that we call the black box. That's going to be basically where you're going to type everything that's going to happen within the script. So it says, Hey, if the input system, which is basically just it recognizing, you know, uh, controllers on a controller pad, uh, keys on a keyboard, mouse input, anything like that, that's input, uh, get key down is saying, Hey, on the keyboard, if I press the R key, which is the key code for R, we're going to make that be red color. Okay. So in this squiggly bracket here, or these braces, you're going to type get component and you'll see that it actually populates sometimes down here. So you can click on that or double click on that. And that'll get you get component without typing the entire thing, uh, less than or left arrow sign renderer, right arrow, left and right parentheses dot material dot color equals color dot red and then you're going to do a semicolon so what that's saying is that on the component or on the game object that this script is attached to check out the renderer which is basically just like the material or the properties or, or the looks of that actual object we're going to change the material color to be red when I press the R key. So it's very simple. So now you're going to go up and you're going to hit file and you're going to hit save all get in the habit of hitting save all because you may have multiple scripts open here that you're working on at the same time. Even if you're only working on one save all still works and you can do control shift S as well. Going back to unity. When I hit play, since we already dragged this onto our cube, you'll see that when I click on cube that you will see cube behavior is down there. When I hit play, our cube will fall. And when I hit R on the keyboard, it changes to red. Perfect. Now hit play again, minimize unity. And we're going to copy that code two more times. So what you're going to do here is you're going to have three of these if statements. So you can hit enter twice after that one and enter twice after that one. And now we have blue which is going to be 
capital B. It's very important that anything that's capitalized is capitalized. Anything that's lowercase is lowercase. And then we're going to have G for green. Uh, whoops, somehow the closed brace, actually two closed braces, got erased on mine. So go up to file and hit save all. Now let's go back to Unity. In the console, if there is an error, you can hit clear, but there should not be anything there. Go back to project, hit play. And as it drops, we can do R, G, B, and you can change the different colors of the materials on the main object. And that's it for this scripting assignment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you come back and watch more. Please do me a favor, help the channel grow, subscribe, like the video, turn on the bell if you wanna see more videos like this one. Appreciate you watching and I'll see you later.